What is a CAPI import and how do I get it? A CAPI import stands for conversion API. I've been using it. It was more of a meta term, but I just use it for meta and Google because the functionality is exactly the same. It's an API connection to meta and Google that is importing a conversion. So import from clicks is usually what it's called in Google. And then CAPI imports is what it's called on meta. Basically, what you're doing is not allowing the tag to self attribute conversions. So you're not allowing your attribution source to be the tag itself. Our conversions are coming in when we've said, is it the first click? Did it come from that campaign? And is it a new customer? Okay, now send it to meta Mm. or now send it to Google. So mm-hmm. we have to verify first on our side before we allow the algorithm to optimize against it. Performance Max is only better because you gives it can attribute the shit that it's not actually doing. Right. So is this a resurgence in Pmax in your opinion, or is it just yeah? This is a one off. It, it absolutely can be because what what I can't do with with standard shopping is I can't say hmm, give me more returning customers now and crank the dial. I can with Pmax, only if I set it up properly from the beginning and measure and and attribute them and convert primary conversion actions towards them. So first click, yes. Cappy import, yes. Omni channel removed, yes. Existing customers blocked, yes. Brand blocked, yes. Now you've turned it back into standard shopping. Good job. But you can go after two different audience types now. Yeah, yeah. Uh That's wild, right? Um, you are just deconstructing everything and find out the standard shopping and Pmax are not any different. One just gets existing customers. Like I've said for two years, I just finally have proof. Yeah. For those who don't know, just explain. We got. We actually had this question last week, and I don't think we answered it. Our, our buddy from Austria asked this question is, what is a CAPI import and how do I get it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so a CAPI import stands for conversion API. I've been using it. It was more of a meta term, but I just use it for meta and Google because the functionality is exactly the same. It's an right. API connection to meta and Google that is importing a conversion. So right. import from clicks is usually what it's called in Google. And then CAPI imports is what it's called on meta. Basically, what you're doing is not allowing the tag to self attribute conversions. So you're not allowing your attribution source to be the tag itself. Our our conversions are coming in when we've said, is it the first click? Did it come from that campaign? And is it a new customer? Okay, now send it to to Meta Mm. or now send it to Google. So Mm -hmm. we have to verify first on our side before we allow the algorithm to optimize against it. Yep. If you let the tag do it on its own, it will attribute new customers, return customers, clicks that originated and from any channel, however long ago. And right. because it's auto-targeting, it will proactively go after those users. Now, Google came out and said, no, 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 just click the only bid for new customers. We prove in time and time again, that's complete junk. Same on Meta, complete yeah. junk. Complete junk. Exactly. So if anybody says I checked the box and I didn't investigate, that's, that's kind of, you know, that's your next step (laughs) to look at that. Yeah. Well, you know, you put in your exclusions not to exclude them. You put in your exclusions to tell Google and meta what your ideal customer probably looks like. (laughs) Yeah. You're like trying. It's not really. Yeah. It's an optimization strategy. Really. It's a one more piece of data. Oh, thank you for that. We won't include those in our advertising at all, Mr. Advertiser. Yep. Just keep putting in your credit card. But, I, you know, again, just make sure it doesn't bounce. The point <laughs> is, is like <laughs> that for so many years, it's like we would do out audits on ads and we're like, oh, man, you're, you're retargeting too many. Like you're getting too many return users or return customers. They're buying the same sort of stuff. A lot of you through conversions, all that. But it was you could actually sort of exclude on meta it never really worked great but it worked well enough enough. yeah at least now recognize it and tried it's out the window (laughs) right so if you think that you're putting in exclusions to help you to get new customers you're actually incorrect unless you use first click cafe imports exactly so you're optimizing away from it rather than it thinking it's working right and the key to this is actually sort of the middle and the tech side, because we do have a couple of questions on this. And I just want to make sure we're clear on it is like, is the edge technology. 
Yeah. Literally. And yeah. you can you can get that anywhere. I mean, we get it from plot out. Typically, there's other sources of it. Mm-hmm. So like we were talking about before, you can buy a cheeseburger anywhere. You get like it from we, Wendy's and oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. It, you, yeah. It's it's the Cappy Imports of Cheeseburger and McDonald's and Wendy's and Burger King all sell one. So the thing that I would have to say is it has to be first click and it has to be edge tagged. So at the point yeah. of the DNS, uh, so that it changes into first party cookie and then it can actually be stored and can be imported and all the other stuff. But that's the that's the right. It has to be done the right way. So people are like, well, I got server side. It's like, well, Cappy Imports also uses a server. That's not the same thing. It's no. the tagging deployment is different between edge versus site, they both go to a server, but your right. server isn't the solution. So I've heard people like, well, I have, I have a server, uh, I'm using a server side. It's like, cool. But where is that data f- being fed into the server from? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. But like, Hey, well then we, we're not doing it yet. <laughs> yeah. So that's where we, we have to make sure, um, like Elevar, fantastic company. They're not edge tag though. They, they deploy from the website. So if your first contentful paint, the largest contentful paints over 10 seconds, you're already losing 30% of your traffic. Right, right. So do you have a visual on that? I, 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 we get a lot of questions on this every single week, but I mean, we have like our own data suite visual on it, which is helpful. But like, how do you describe it? If you have to describe it to somebody sort of off the street, like this is how it works. And you're also, if your site speed is super slow, obviously you're you're missing a lot because you're being captured on the edge. Whenever, like, I like to think of it this way. Like, I know we're going to do a little, and we're going to do a little, paint. little MS paint here. Yeah. Uh, John is Van Gogh. Uh, it, <laughs> if you really think about it, like an edge server is used to speed up the web. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the basic technology. And there's a lot of companies that do this. But when marketers got a hold of this, they said, wait a second, we can actually capture, you know, that user data on the edge without it being blocked sort of Mm -hmm. after the fact from iOS 14 updates and privacy blockers, you know, Chrome extensions, you, you name it, uh, all of that. And you're basically capturing it before it gets blocked. So that was like the big thing for us when we first sort of stumbled on this and then integrated into data suite, you can somewhat mimic it with Cappy imports to a lesser degree. I mean, we like it because obviously we've got, you know, Wicked Reports is the interface side of it, so we can see exactly what channel is doing what. But this technology has existed for years and years and years. It's mm-hmm. just now it's marketers are now using it, and obviously people like yourself are taking it sort of to the next level. So anyway, we've got some we've got some cool graphics here. Yeah, look at that graphic design. I know this is good. <laughs> Lauren, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Lauren Schwartz when you've got? You know, creative like this. Boom. I mean, come on. <laughs> Free of charge right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do your ads, folks. Uh, uh, all right. So oh this God, is a uh, God this, help us. <laughs> uh, so here's the here's the standard uh, way that that it is currently going. If you're having something that a meta or Google tag, you yeah. have a person that somehow connects to your domain add click direct click link click doesn't matter they're getting to the www of your website right that then sends from your domain registrar points to your host which is your website and then your website has obviously your your content and when a person lands there and does something your conversion tag sends off to meta or google hey we had a person come to our site and they converted and because they came to the site from meta they have metas you know fbid if it's google they have gclid gbraid w braid with them yep the problem though is a few things gclids get stripped there's also ad blockers there's also privacy there's also consent mode there's also different tech and if they aren't all matching you get broken users you get three clicks from the same user that look like three different people to three different platforms that's right. where this thing starts to break down and it starts and det- to fall apart. Yeah. It deteriorates. Exactly. Yeah. So what we're doing is essentially as a user connects to the WWW, we clone the traffic into a data warehouse. This is your server. So this is when people say, oh, I have a server. It's the deployment of the server that's important, not the fact that we have a server. Yep. So the deployment comes actually at the WWW. So this part here allows all traffic going to the site to be stored. This also has all the original sources. It has all the repeat sources. It has all the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, twenty eighth click sources. All of this is seen. It's fingerprinted together because it's coming from the domain registrar before it gets lost when it goes to the host. So now we can see all the traffic going to the site. Now let's say someone goes to the site and converts. Well, that conversion tag 
doesn't go this way. It doesn't go to the platforms. It actually comes back into the server here. So mm -hmm. now we have all the traffic and the data from the conversion. Yep. Then there's additional functionality. The server calls the CRM and says, hey, if we see the data layer, we have first name, last name, email, phone number, credit card number, blah, blah, blah. Anything that's captured, is this found in your system? And either sends back, yes, these people have uh, are in the system. We found a match or no, we did not find a match. Based on yes or no, it is either a first customer or a returning customer or a new customer, returning customer. And that is either going to, let's say, Meta, if it was the first touch point, or if not, Meta gets erased and Google goes there. So yep. it's only sending back to the original source. So second clicks are not being attributed inside the PayMe platform. Omnichannel overlap is not being attributed inside the PayMe platform. So I'm no longer getting returning customers, Meta's traffic in my Google and Google's traffic in my Meta. I will still be able to go after them. I can't stop the functionality from hunting them down and converting them. But according to the paid media platforms, nothing happened. So no conversion rates, no NCAC, no ROAS, nothing is showing on customers that I have not verified came from the original source and are and are or are not found in your CRM. And I'm sending it to the individual platform. This means that the platform only learns off of users it generated. So I'm optimizing off of contribution, not optimizing off of attribution. That is a very important distinction. And so that's how the CAPI imports are working. <clears throat> and that's that's one of the reasons why we get rid of all the junk and we can scale because when you cannot scale, it's because you're going after the wrong users. Like I can't birth people and make them existing customers, which means I can't scale existing customers. I can only scale existing customers by getting more new. It's simple physics, like right. it's bodies. Right. So it's very, very simplistic and it's very, it's, it's streamlined to the healthiest amount of keep the data clean because there's no junk being added to the data upon entry.